Hey everyone, today we are going to see details about system requirements to install Exchange Server 2013. So agenda for today is we will see server roles in Exchange Server 2013. We will see what are server roles can be installed in Exchange Server 2013. Next we will see system requirement for installing Exchange Server 2013 on single windows server. Next we will see system requirement for installing Exchange Server 2013 on multiple windows server. Then we will see steps for installing Exchange Server 2013. In the last we will see post installation task after installing the Exchange Server 2013. First we will see what are server role in Exchange Server 2013 can be installed. So Exchange Server 2013 that has three server roles that can be installed. These are client access server role, mailbox server role and edge transport server role. The hub transport server role which was there in the previous version of Exchange Server is now divided between client access server role and the mailbox server role. So the function of hub transport server role is now performed by client access server role and the mailbox server role. So in Exchange Server 2013, these three server role can be installed. Here in this, the client access server role and the mailbox server role can be installed on two different windows server or can be installed on a single windows server. The edge transport server role is always installed on single windows server and this server role is installed on non-domain join machine. This server role is designed to sit in demilitarized zone or the perimeter network in your organization. The system requirement for installing Exchange Server 2013 will differ if you are installing these three server role on uh, three different Windows Server or installing on single Windows Server. Here the single Windows Server means installing mailbox and client access server role on single Windows Server and the edge transport server which will always be on different non-domain join Windows Server. The system requirement will also differ for memory requirement. If we are installing Exchange Server 2013 on single Windows Server or on multiple Windows Server. It is recommended to have minimum 20% free disk space should be available on disk drive where the mailbox database is hosted. If you are hosting user mailboxes on on-premises server, this requirement should be met or else the mailbox database will get dismounted. Now we will see memory requirement for installing Action Server 2013 on single windows server. If we are installing mailbox server role and the client access server role on single windows server, then we need to have minimum 8 GB of RAM and minimum 30 GB of hard disk. This is the minimum requirement and if you are planning to host all the user mailboxes on on-premises action server and you want to save all the logs on on-premises action server then you have to add more memory. It depends on your organization requirement. To install H transport server role we need to have minimum 4 GB of RAM and 20 GB of hard disk. The file format supported is NTFS. The minimum required processor is of 64 bit processor. If this minimum requirement are not there, then there will be performance issue will happen. We need to have this minimum requirement set or we have to increase the RAM and CPU as well for better performance. Now we will see memory requirement for installing Action Server 2013 on different or multiple Windows Server. To install mailbox server role, we need to have minimum 8 GB of RAM and 30 GB of hard disk. And to install client access server role, we need to have minimum 4 GB of RAM and 20 GB of hard disk. And the edge transport server role required minimum 4 GB of RAM and 20 GB of hard disk. The file format supported is NTFS. The minimum required processor is 64 bit. And again the same, if these minimum requirement are not there, then there will be performance issue 
on Exchange Server. So we need to have this minimum requirement set or we can increase the RAM and CPU as well for better performance but our requirement should be there. Now we will see operating system requirement for installing Exchange Server 2013. So Exchange Server 2013 can be installed on these Windows Server. The minimum operating system requirement or the Windows Server required is Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center RTM or the later version of that. And the highest supported Windows version is Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard or Data Center. We cannot install Exchange Server 2013 application on uh, Windows Server 2016 or on Windows Server 2019. I would prefer to install the Exchange Server 2013 application on Windows Server 2012 R2. So these are the supported operating system requirement where we can install the Exchange Server 2013. Now we will see supported Active Directory environment that Exchange Server 2013 can communicate with. In this, your existing Active Directory forest function level should be on minimum Windows Server 2003 and Exchange Server 2013 can communicate if you have your AD is on Windows Server 2016 as well. Your Active Directory plays a very important role in Exchange application because your Exchange Server is tightly integrated with your Active Directory environment. These are two non-supported scenario for installing Exchange Server 2013. Let's say you have Exchange Server 2003 is already installed in your environment. Then you cannot install Exchange Server 2013. First you have to install the Exchange Server 2010 in your environment and migrate all the details from Exchange Server 2003 to Exchange Server 2010 and decommission the Exchange Server 2003 and then you can introduce the Exchange Server 2013. So the coexistence with the Exchange Server 2003 is not supported for installing Exchange Server 2013. And Outlook 2003 client is not supported for users who are hosted on Exchange Server 2013. So these are the Windows Server requirement for AD Forest function level for Exchange Server 2013. Next is supported email client for Exchange Server 2013. The Exchange Server 2013 support these type of Outlook clients. Now these all ports are required to open in Microsoft Exchange Server 2013 for better communication and not to have any performance issue from Exchange side. Next we will see prerequisites for installing Exchange Server 2013. These prerequisites are required for installing mailbox and cache role that is client access server role. Now here we need to install these software on Windows Server on which we are going to install the Exchange 2013 and we need to we need to have these Windows component required to install on the Windows Server. We can run these two command in Windows PowerShell after running these two command all required component will get installed. And we need to download these first five software from this URL that is Exchange Server 2013 prerequisites. After installing this Windows component and software, we need to restart the server. So these are the mandatory prerequisites for installing mailbox and client access server role. Now we will see required prerequisites for installing Exchange Transport Server role. We just need these three softwares and only this Windows component as this server role is installed on non-domain joint machine. We don't need other Windows component. You can download this software from this URL and more details are available on this URL. Next we will see some of the best practices for Exchange Server 2013. 
So before installing Exchange Server 2013 for first time in the production environment, we recommend you to first install this Exchange Server 2013 on test environment. With this approach, we can reduce the risk in our production environment and we can test all the details that we want. And the test environment will act as proof of concept for your Exchange 2013. It is not recommended to install the Exchange Server on Domain Controller. If you are planning to install the Exchange 2013 on your existing server where your Active Directory server role is installed, then it is not recommended from Microsoft side. You need to install the Exchange on different server and the Active Directory on different Windows server. The reason it is not recommended because, let's say if you are planning to perform any activity on Active Directory and if you need to restart the server or shut down the server for some time, then that change will also affect on your exchange as well. If you install the exchange on domain controller, you will face issue with the exchange services and with the exchange permissions as well. So it is not recommended to install the exchange server on domain controller. And once the Action Server is installed, we cannot change its installation path. Let's say you have installed the Exchange under C drive and after successful installation, you cannot change the path of Exchange to some other drive. The Exchange installation path will remain same. Now these are the some post installation tasks that we need to follow. After installing Exchange, First, we have to apply the product key. A product key tells Exchange Server 2013 that you have purchased the standard or enterprise edition license. To check more detail about the standard or enterprise edition license, please check my separate video. The link is in i button or I have provided in the description box as well. Next, we have to configure the mail flow and client access. In this step, you have to configure the send and receive connector for email flow and for client connectivity like Outlook or ActiveSync devices, you have to configure the virtual directories and certificates on Action Server 2013. In the third step, we have to configure the internet mail flow through a subscribed Edge Transport server. To establish internet mail through an Edge Transport server, Subscribe the H transport server to an Active Directory site. This will auto automatically create two send connector required for internet email flow. If you don't want to subscribe the H transport server to the Active Directory site, then we can create the send connector manually to establish mail flow between your mailbox server role and the H transport server role. Next, we have to verify the Exchange 2013 installation. There are multiple ways to verify the Exchange Server 2013 is correctly installed or not. We can run the command get hyphen Exchange Server and we can check for the output like uh, the build number of the Exchange that is installed. We can verify the all the Microsoft Exchange related services are correctly installed and those services are in running state. We can verify the all the server component state and all the server components should be in active state. Next, we can verify the Exchange installation from the Exchange Setup log and we can verify the details like Exchange is correctly installed by sending and receiving test email. Next is installing the Exchange Server 2013 management tool. Now these Exchange 2013 management tools are automatically get installed when you, when you install the Exchange in an unattended mode and if you are installing the Exchange with graphical user interface or with GUI, you need to select an option to install the Exchange 2013 management tools. Now this is all about system requirement for installing Exchange Server 2013. We will cover the Exchange 2013 installation with practical in another video. 
If you have any questions or suggestions, please do let me know in the comment section. And finally, thanks for watching.